What would it take to build an entire theme park based on the profits of only one ride? Today I'm exploring this question in Roller Coaster Tycoon. It's been nearly 25 years since this game was first released in 1999, a splendiferous game about building roller coasters and killing your guests. My favorite scenario in this game is the Micro Park, but since I wanted to try out different coasters than there were in the original Roller Coaster Tycoon, I decided to set up my own custom scenario, where I would start off with no money and just one ride to profit off of. Could I build an entire park based on the back of this one ride's profits? And what ride would it be? Unfortunately, most of the coaster prefabs have footprints that are simply too large to fit in the micro park, so I was forced to build my own coaster, custom. Something outstandingly dumb and short. I began my experiments. The junior coaster. The mini roller coaster. The steeplechase. The wild mouse. Unfortunately, none of these were a hit. Most guests refused to ride the most primitive, rudimentary coasters. The junior coaster, slow and unexciting. The mini roller coaster, a bore to behold. And the wild mouse, not so wild after all. The only candidate I discovered in the roster that was just outstandingly dumb enough to work was the air-powered coaster. But it wasn't me, it was from one of Marcel Vos's videos. I'm a big fan of Marcel, so if you're watching this, I do recommend you go check out his videos. It may not look exciting, but somehow it is. This ride lasts for two seconds and it's capable of generating over $23,000 profit per hour. Just like that, in March, year one, I opened the park and commenced the experiment. My first attempt. After my failed designs at other inferior coasters, this air-powered coaster was an instant yeah. hit. More and more guests flocked to the tiny square, eager to board the train for their chance to spend 16 buckaroos yeah. on the overpriced coaster. Despite a few people's fear of the coaster, it was so successful with most that I had to construct an ATM so they could keep getting more of their money out to ride the coaster again and again. The line was going out the door, so I had to extend the queue to accommodate the tremendous success of our sole attraction. Unfortunately, $23,000 cash flow per hour still isn't enough to win the scenario objective of achieving $100,000 park value by October year three. After all, this is the in-game objective of the micro park. So I decided to scrap everything. I'd have to restart the challenge entirely. Too much time had gone by and it would simply be impossible for me to still win. I had also made the disastrous financial mistake of building a 20-story ramp upward, then ran out of money and had to unfortunately demolish it. Attempt number two. The air-powered vertical coaster was great and all, but it was simply too intense for some of the guests. So after a brief attempt to entertain the others with balloon and concession stalls, I ripped yet another one of Marcelvos's brilliant and attractive coaster designs to occupy the rest of my guests. The corkscrew coaster, perhaps the simplest of them all, which consists of only a single piece, one half corkscrew launched at the minimum speed, which terrifyingly sends two cars near the edge of the track, then reverses right before it's about to go off the edge. The ride lasts for three somewhat exciting seconds. The attraction itself occupies only four full spaces of the amusement park and is perhaps the most efficient coaster design in the entire game. The result? An overnight hit. No more were customers too afraid of the coaster anymore. This one's level of intensity was acceptable. It wasn't too high to scare anyone off like its air-powered sibling. I built a park starting with only one of them, but built up to five in practically no time at all. This park was both profitable and successful, far more so than the first one. People loved it. They couldn't get enough. But it still wasn't the most profitable possible park. What if I could somehow combine the two rides? What would that look like? So after a little trial and error, I engineered a brilliant design. A park where two corkscrew coasters sat inside of the tracks of the air-powered coaster itself. The line snaked up and over the tracks of the air-powered coaster and back into the main path of the park to let customers queue. The result? An insanely crowded park that generates nearly $40,000 an hour, complete with concessions, balloons, and for some reason, an information kiosk in case you're stupid enough to get lost. It may not be space efficient, 
but you gotta admit, it looks pretty sweet for just three rides. And to top it all off, it was just enough to earn exactly $100,000 in only three seasons. Somehow I had still failed the scenario objective. I guess I should have actually spent the money and reinvested it into the park itself, instead of just letting it collect inside of my bank account. But then again, I felt like I had found something perhaps even more exciting than the original One Ride Micro Park Challenge with which I had begun in mind. You know, honestly, I had met my goal of beating the Micro Park, but I felt weirdly dissatisfied. So I decided it was time to up the ante. What if I still started with only one ride, but this time instead, I gave myself as much space as needed. So I rebuilt the entire scenario from the ground up. I set out a new theme park, one theme park to rule them all. Not an amusement park, but an amazement park. Still, I began with zero dollars and only one ride. A single half corkscrew this time. Before the end of the first march, it was already enough to afford a second, then a third, and a fourth roller coaster. Before you know it, I could hardly spend the money fast enough to keep up with the consumer demand. Approval and popularity grew. I was considering running an auto hotkey script to build the rest of the rides, but instead I decided to blueprint my two coaster designs in the track designer. If you play Roller Coaster Tycoon enough, it eventually just turns into Factorio. You stop being happy and you begin to obsess. The rides multiplied, but there was no variation. It was all just exactly the same thing over and over again in different colors. Once I exhausted the colors of the rainbow, I just started making everything white because you can't pause the game while you're building and I simply couldn't keep up with the sheer amount of vomit that my guests were producing after their intense rides. I began to produce repeated patterns of exactly the same roller coasters, corkscrew, and air-powered vertical coasters. And already by October of the first year, I'd crossed the $100,000 valuation threshold. Ratings and profits both skyrocketed. Although the vomit situation required constant maintenance and cleanup, both literally and figuratively. There was vomit just everywhere. The sheer volume of upchuck produced from over 1,000 guests enjoying themselves was perhaps the one thing holding us back from realizing our full potential as an amusement park. So, in order to combat the growing disgust of the general public with the putrid, ungodly state of the footpaths, I hired more handymen who swept up the piles of vomit diligently. Wherever there was throw up, Within seconds, there was a man with a broom eagerly waiting to sweep up the accident. From this point forward, it would be perhaps more germane to describe the amusement park as a factory. I built exactly the same ride over and over again. And when it got too crowded at the center of the park, I filtered out the foot traffic via little highways above the coasters, leading to, yes, exactly the same coaster. Then beyond that, exactly the same coaster yet again, and again. Before you know it, I had an assembly line of exactly the same coaster over and over again, yet guests couldn't seem to get enough of it. They loved it here. We were making money so rapidly, and it was getting so crowded and full of vomit though, that the park rating started to drop. So I had to hire more handymen and airdrop them in above areas of high vomit. Disaster averted. More than $300,000 in less than two years. A marvel to behold. Then I decided to use all the excess funds to build just every prefab coaster I could, surrounding the hellscape of the theme park. When you zoom out, it looks pretty impressive, even though I didn't put any work into it. At least the money-making strategy was creative. And there wasn't much more choice now, I simply couldn't keep up with the refurbishing costs and number of clicks required to keep the park running. Then I built 58 corkscrew coasters in the corner. I just, I just felt like it needed it. And I hired over 125 handymen since I was no longer capable of keeping track of the vomit on the ground. All with plenty of time to spare at the grand finale, October year three. I had built a park valued at nearly $2 million, all starting from just one single ride. Ultimately, I think that's what I love the most about Roller Coaster Tycoon, and maybe computer gaming in general. It's a game that lets you start looking up close at something simple and easy to understand, then build it up and twist it until it's this giant, intractable, but beautiful aneurysm of a spectacle you can step back and admire from a distance. 
like something found in nature, albeit rendered in oversaturated 1998 pixel art. Anyway, I hope you found or remembered something to enjoy here. I'm Ambiguous Amphibian. A big thanks to my patrons who have never died on a roller coaster. Until next time.